So I'll do all nine questions just to, um, all, uh, all together. Because if they are indeed easy, then I should be able to do them quickly. So I, I should be able to finish them pretty quick. Um, so there's no time constraint. If they aren't easy, then uh, you should have help doing that. <laughs> so let me first write down the formula that I think I will need as I do these single slit diffraction questions. So when you look through the textbook for the formulas, <laughs> the uh, formulas that you will need are, you can look up uh, two equations. So this is uh, describing single slit diffraction. And um, as you talk about diffraction or interference pattern, really the uh, feature of interest is where you see constructive interference and where you see destructive interference. And for destructive interference, there's a really clever argument that um, that the book brings up. You pair up different portions of the slate and then you imagine sliding it down. So you can <laughs> watch through that. Um, and what I'm mainly interested in is the expression that comes out of that. The expression that comes out of that is the, the size of the slit. I'm going to use letter A times the um, times the sine theta, the uh, angle from the, so theta is defined this way. So if you have a slit here, this is your screen. Um, this is your kind of direct uh, perpendicular line. And you are looking at some spot over here. Then this uh, theta is the direction of, uh, in which the rays are going. So that's A sine theta. When that's equal to an integer in multiple of wavelength, n times wavelength lambda, where n um, so n cannot be zero. If n is equal to zero, that's your central maximum. You have bright center there. So n starts with a value of one. It could be plus or minus one for either side. It can be plus minus two and so. On. Uh, so integer values excluding zero. So this condition will give you destructive interference. Now, for those who, who might be just uh, skimming for the formulas, uh, this might look uh, super, super similar to um, the double solid constructive interference formula. So I'll just say, don't confuse with the double solid constructive interference. And I cover in the lecture how they are really different. Different situations, different arguments altogether. Now, for constructive interference, uh, let me see if there's any question that asks for that. I know your textbook gives a formula, but um, it's uh, only approximate. So I hesitate to write down an approximate formula if I don't need it. So let's see if I need it. So um, for this first question here, it says, consider the light falling on a single slit of some width. Uh, and, oh, so let me do this. Uh, I'm going to define the variables I'll need. A, theta, uh, n, uh, I don't, um, let me use m, because n is a kind of special, I don't want to override n. So m and lambda, uh, those are my variables. And for constructive interference, really, really the equation I'm dealing with is one, a times the sine theta is equal to m times lambda. That's the equation I'm working with. So it asks, at what angle is the first minimum of the diffraction intensity? So I want to solve for theta. Let's let's see if a sage math can solve this equation for theta. Uh, sometimes when it needs to use the inverse trig function, it might choke, but this uh, it's simple enough it does. Okay, okay, I solve for theta. Uh, let me put the solution into uh, a variable and I can say my, the first element of that array is my solution. Let's substitute in the numbers we have, which is, um, let me put plug in the numbers in uh, microns, uh, micrometer. So the wavelength is, uh, so I happen to know how to convert these microns in my head. That's a 0 0.595 micron. Uh, the width of the slit is 0 0.8 micron. I think it's, oh, M. So it's a first minimum. So I should say M is equal to one. So yeah, 
So the angle, now you got to remember that this is in radians. And the question is, question is asking for uh, in degrees. So I need to convert this to degrees, 180 degrees per pi uh, or 3.14. Uh, okay, 48.1 degrees. Okay, will there be a second minimum? Oh, you know, I don't know. Let's try that. Um, so if I take this and solve for the second minimum, say m equals 2, what do I get? Oh, uh, yeah, complex number. That means that there won't be a second minimum. No. Oh. Yeah, good. Straightforward application of formula. Let's look at the next question. Uh, so this is the first, second question. Uh, consider some width slit producing a diffraction for a light falling on it. Uh, what is the angle at which this produces a first minima? Oh, it, it's all exactly the same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to take this. So first minimum. So m is equal to 1. The wavelength in microns is 400 microns, and the width of the slit is 2.3 micro. Wonder, um, want to automate some of this. Um, what happens if I multiply this by 180 degrees divided by a numerical value of pi? All right, all right. Um, so it looks a little ugly, but I think it's fine. So doing this, multiply both sides of my of equation by this. So I'm just going to ignore this on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, this will be my answer in degrees, uh, 10.02. And uh, for the red light, uh, it will be, let's take this, and just change the wavelength to 7, 10 nanometer or 0.7 one micron, slit size remains the same, and 17.18.0. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, good. This is the second question. Let's do the third question. Consider a 640 nanometer light shining on a single slit. How wide is the single slit if uh, first minimum is at an angle? Okay, we are okay. a little bit of a difference. So looking at this equation, this time we are asked for the width uh, given the angle. So let's uh, solve this for the width. I'm going to put the solution into a variable. So my uh, first element there, substitute in um, so we have, let's see, we want the width in microns, so let's plug in wavelength in microns, 0 0.64 micron for that nanometer thing. Um, and the first minimum, so m is equal to 1. Uh, what else? Oh, theta. Uh, theta is given by, so 26 degrees, which we need to convert to radian for Sage Matthews. So multiply by pi, divide by 180. Okay. All right, it says the width is 1.46 micron. And for the slit of this width, at what angle will the second minimum be? Oh, I wish I had an overwritten uh, some of the previous solutions. Ah, it's fine. I can just do the thing. So we got this. Uh, we'll now solve for theta. Um, and we'll put that solution into a variable. Um, and after having done that, um, um, we'll substitute in the numbers. So the wavelength will still be the same. Uh, M will be now the second uh, uh, order. And theta, we are, um, we are calculating for it. So yeah, so this will give me an answer in radians. So let me just multiply through by 180 degrees divided by pi. Okay, let's see what we get. Um, oh, um, I forgot to plug in A. So I need to put in A is equal to this value. Okay, so the angle is a 61 point three degrees.
61.3 degrees. And uh, because these angles are large, um, that's why I couldn't use a small angle approximation. Like in the limit where you could use a small angle approximation, this answer would have been double that. But you know, double that, 52, it's not quite 61.3. That's why I have to go through the exact calculator calculation. That's the think, third question. Let's do the fourth question. Uh, sodium vapor light, average, okay, so I'm just gonna use this as the monochromatic light, first on that. At what angle does it produce its second minima? Okay, uh, let me see. I think I can use this. So wait, no, not that. Um, I can use this. This is the one solving for angle. And um, I'm going to use wavelength in, uh, yeah, with, with, slip with this given micron. So let me do wavelength in microns, 0 0.539 micron. It's looking for second minimum. So this is still good. And now the width of the slit is six microns. Um, yeah, and I still want to convert this to degrees. Okay, so 10.35 degrees. Uh, what is the highest order minimum produced? Ah, that's interesting. Um, what I think is the quickest way to get it is just the trial and error. Uh, so let me actually just get this. I don't need to resolve the thing over and over. So, okay, M equals two gives me this. Um, so nine times that. So M equals 18. Let's see what kind of solution we get. Uh, okay, it's already imaginary, so okay, we don't want m equals 18, m equals 15. All right, all right, 12. Okay, okay, getting there. Uh, maybe I went too far, maybe. Okay, m equals 10 gives us a real solution, m equals 11 gives us a real solution, m equals 12. Okay, so m equals 11. 11th is the highest order produced. I mean, you know, there's probably more. Um, I guess mathematically sophisticated way to do it, but sometimes brute force is quicker because um, there aren't that many choices. Uh, and especially when you're using computer algebra system, getting an answer each time, it's a quick thing. So it's uh, much quicker to just try a bunch and get an answer than to algebraically solve whatever it is. What was the hint? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't use that. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, look at the next question. Is that the fifth question, maybe? Okay. okay. If the separation between first and the second minima of a single solid diffraction pattern is that, what is the distance between the screen and the slit? Um, well, that is such an odd way to ask. The light wavelength is this, and the slit width is this. Okay, I feel like we've give, been given enough information to calculate the angles of the first and the second minima. Let's just start with that. So I'm going to uh, get this, solve for the angle for the, uh, the first and the second diffraction minima. So wavelength of um, 500 nanometers or 0.5 micron. Uh, oh wait. Yeah, and this uh, 0 0.06 millimeter that's uh, um, in microns, you know, one, two, three, it's going to be 60 microns. So let me say my slit width is 60 microns, and I'm looking for first order first. Um, let me not convert this to degrees. I think uh, I can work with radian answer, so I'll keep it as radian. Okay, so this is first order. All right, that's pretty small. Uh, let's look at the second order. I might be able to use a small angle approximation, which will simplify some of the calculations. Yeah, yeah. So I have um, angle difference of this minus this as being the difference in the angular direction in which those two uh, minima are at. So let me say, call this delta. Yeah. So this being the difference between the two angles, um, this is the relationship. So I think I can even use this figure. Um, so this being some kind of um, angle, you know, delta theta. 
the kind of the arc length here is given for small angles, uh, given this distance L. The arc length here is given by the angular difference times the distance L. So uh, we know the angular difference, and we are told the arc length. So, um, so this being the arc length, let's say S, uh, it's asking us to solve for L. So L will be S divided by delta theta. Okay, so let's do that. Um, S, 5.5 millimeter divided by delta theta. And then that answer will come in in millimeters. And I'm looking ahead and seeing that the unit that we are being asked to answer in is meters. So we'll multiply uh, with the same millimeters. So divide it by a thousand so that the final answer is in meters. Okay, so 0.65, uh, okay, <laughs> 0.660 meter. That's the distance between the screen and the solid. Let me look ahead to the next sixth question and then see if, uh, okay, I'm not going to be using this again. So let me just erase the figures I drew. All right, let's keep going. Sixth question, what is the width of the single solid that produces first minimum at the... All right, I got to find one of my equations. So I think I did one. Uh, all, right, all right, I'll just take this and just uh, rewrite stuff. So we are not solving for angle, we are solving for width again. Um, as a reminder, that's the equation. We are solving for width, A. Uh, and uh, so we have the wavelength, 680 nanometer or 0.68 uh, micron. And oh, we, we are going to want the answers in nanometers. So let me just plug in wavelength in nanometers. The first uh, diffraction minimum m is equal to 1. So we want to provide the theta. Theta will be at 65 degrees. Convert that to radian. So that times pi divided by 180. Um, and this will give us the width in nanometers. 750.3 nanometers. I guess that sounds about right. 750.3 nanometers. Find the wavelength of light that has its first minimum at that. I'm assuming assuming the same width of the single solid. So we are going to be using that as a width. So we'll take this and this time solve for theta. And uh, oh wait, not oh, wavelength. Okay, 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 okay. Um, wavelength. Uh, so we are solving for lambda. That's new. So we are not providing lambda this time. Uh, First minimum still, and the theta will now be 67 degrees. And for A, we'll plug in the uh, number that we calculated. Um, and we are plugging in A in nanometers, so lambda will be in nanometers. Okay, that's new. Uh, 690.7 nanometers. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say about it. It's kind of straightforward application of this one formula that I've been using. And uh, so that was the sixth, seventh question, I think. <laughs> okay, find the wavelength of light that has its a third minimum at an angle that when it falls on, okay, I think I can. So wavelength, oh, I think I can just keep using this because we're still talking wavelength. Uh, we are talking third minimum, theta of 51.4, width of the slit of uh, four, 4 microns. So we are going to be answering in nanometers, so let me write 4 microns in nanometers, which will be 4,000 nanometers. Okay, so the wavelength is uh, 1042 nanometers. Okay, uh, that was 7. I think this is eight. <laughs> um, okay, so eighth question. Consider a single slit diffraction pattern for lambda is equal to that. Projected on a screen that is 1.8 meters from a slit of that. Half far from the center 
are the pattern, center of the pattern, are the centers of the first and the second darker fringes. Okay, so I think we are doing the same thing. Let's calculate the angular quantities first. So we can take this. So for the angles, theta, uh, first and second. So let's do m equals 1. Uh, I'm solving for theta, so I'll need to provide lambda. Um, slit size is in uh, millimeters. Uh, 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 let me just do everything in meters. 589 times 10 to the power of minus 9, that's in meters. Slit size is 0 0.25 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Milli so it's going to be in meters. So this will give us theta. OK. That's uh, for the first uh, uh, dark fringe. The second dark fringe is that it's going to be basically double that. I think we are in the regime that's good for yeah, small angle approximation. So the, um, oh, so for, I guess I can do each of them separately. So they are both at relatively small angle. So what we were using before, that the arc length here, S, for small angles theta, is about, given the distance of the screen, S is about theta times L. That's going to be valid for these small angles in radials. So for the position of the first fringe, so you know with the center of the central maximum being at 0 millimeter, it would be uh, this number times the distance to the screen, so 1.8 meters. That's going to be in meters. So I can take this, multiply the whole thing by 1,000 to get answer in millimeters. So 4.24 millimeters for the first uh, fringe. And because these are small angles, small angle approximation applies, I can take this and double it for the next number. It's not exact, but it's close enough that it'll be within that 1% tolerance and say that it's the correct answer. So that's the eighth question. Ninth and the final question is not even an optics question. All right. <laughs> an aircraft maintenance technician looks past the tall hangar door. OK, that acts like a single slit. OK, OK, so it's acting like a single slit. So I think we can still use this. Let's see. Outside the door on a line perpendicular to opening in the door. Yeah, it's this line. Um, a jet engine. Uh, yeah, jet engine makes a, a frequency of sound. Uh, okay, so we gotta figure out the wavelength. We'll do that. Um, at what angle with the door will the technician observe the first minimum in sound intensity if the vertical opening is that wide? And this, okay. So what is, you need to work through that we haven't so far had to do is this relationship. So you have a relationship that relates a speed of a wave with its frequency and wavelength. So far, we've been given wavelength, so we use it directly. Here, we are going to be given frequency. So we need to solve this for wavelength. To get wavelength is the speed of the wave divided by the frequency. And I'll use this expression to plug in a value for wavelength on the fly. So we are solving this for angle, I think. Yeah, at what angle with the door. Yeah. So we are solving for angle. First minimum, so m is equal to 1. Where we are looking for wavelength, we are plugging in speed of sound, 340 meter per second, divided by its frequency, 626 hertz or 626 1 over second, 1 over seconds cancel, I get wavelength in meters. And the size of the opening is in 0 0.9 meters. Everything is in meters, we should be fine. Um, and to that answer, which will be in radians, I want to multiply that by 180 degrees, divided by pi, so that I get an answer in uh, degrees. So answer being 37.1 degrees. Yeah, and so not a single question asked for constructive interference. I think because um, I skipped any questions that asked for that. I didn't like the fact that if you are working, looking for constructive interference with a single slit diffraction, you will be using a formula that has uh, 
approximation built into it, and I didn't like that. I prefer to deal with the destructive interference when it comes to single uh, single slit diffraction. So that's <laughs> the choice I made that's shown here.